Sitting on the bench is never looked upon as something good. As an athlete, we all want to play and show the world how good we truly are. But some of us just aren't given that opportunity. But just because you're down doesn't mean you should stay down though. There's beauty in the struggle of being on the bench that could turn you into everything you want to be and more. How being on the bench prepared me for life. So first things first, my name is Reed Jones. I was a college basketball player. I played at a school called Johnson & Wills for four years. And during my four years around that time, I had an up and down career, but most of the time I was on the bench. I was bench riding, man. And I learned a lot of things through that time that helped prepare me to become who I am today. Creating my own business, doing YouTube and things like that. A lot of the qualities I got from being on the bench and trying to play helped me grow not only as a person, but in business and relationships and things like that. So the first thing I learned from being on the bench was to be prepared. And with being prepared requires patience. A lot of times when I was on the bench, you know, I had to wait for my turn. I had to trust God's timing and his plan for me because a lot of the times where I'd be sitting down on the bench, I'm like, yo man, itching to play, but it's not my time yet. I still got to work on my shot. I still got to get my handles better. I still got to become a better defender in practice. I got to learn the plays. I got to be patient. And the same thing goes in life. You got to be patient for the things that you truly want. A lot of the things that we want, we not ready for yet, but we got to be prepared. So when that time do come, we can seize the moment. If you're someone who's on the bench, you need to be working on the things that you always work on. Even if you're not playing, still keep working on the things that you gotta work on because if you're prepared and you're ready and your coach throw you in the game, somebody get injured or somebody fouls out the game and now it's your turn, you go in, you produce, you see that moment. Same way how life works. A lot of times you could be put on the spot to do something, but if you're ready, you're prepared, you're confident, you know, you know what you're doing, then that's how you know you can make money. That's how you can get different opportunities to grow within yourself. And being prepared is the biggest thing that like being on the bench taught me because if you're not prepared, if you're not ready, then how do you expect to grow further? How could we ask for more minutes when we're not prepared? We, we don't have the ability to play more minutes. We don't have the ability to go out and score, go out and rebound, go out and defend. Also with being prepared, we gotta be able to evolve ourselves. Especially as a hooper, a lot of us, we just wanna go in and score. The team we may be on at the time may already have those pieces in the game. They may already have a score, a three-point shooter, things like that. So what are you gonna do different? You're gonna have to evolve your game. You're gonna have to become a defender, a rebounder, an energy guy, things like that. You know, be what your team needs. So it taught me to always be prepared, always be ready for the moment. You never know. A lot of us, we may be at the end of the bench. You know, we may think, yo, I'm probably not, I'm not gonna play this team. You know, we playing a tough team today. I ain't gonna play them at the end of the bench. First quarter, your coach call you in, but because you have a fixed mindset of, yeah, I'm not playing today, I'm not ready. Now he put you in the game, you playing against the top team. If you do good, that's an opportunity for you to earn more minutes. That's an opportunity for you to grow, but because you're not ready mentally, because you're not ready with your skill set, you just messed up your moment. And it's the same way in life, bro. If you're not ready to seize that moment, you're not ready to take care of business when it's time to take care of business, you're gonna fold, man. So that's the first thing it taught me, to always be prepared. Second, it taught me perspective. Throughout that time when I was on the bench, I ain't gonna lie, your boy wanted to quit, but that's because my perspective was wrong. I was more looking at it as, you know, I wasn't good enough, I'm not ready. I was self-doubting myself, man. And, it took a lot of soul searching for me not to you know, quit and things like that. We gotta change our perspectives on how we view when sitting on the bench. We gotta look at things as a journey rather than a race. I know it's extremely hard, like being on the bench is crazy. And some of us, you know, whether you're good enough or whether you know, you're just starting out and you're getting better over time, you gotta change your perspective. Instead of complaining and saying, yo, I should get more minutes than this person, look at it as a different perspective. Look at it like, okay, what does my team need? All right, we, we didn't do good at rebounding. All right, let me work on rebound. Let me start rebounding in practice. We didn't bring no energy in the game. All right, let me start bringing energy in practice and things like that. But we gotta change our perspective. Once I shifted my perspective from I'm not good enough to, oh, I know I'm good enough, wait till I get my moment, my whole game changed. I'll go in the game being mad, sad, cause I, I didn't play the first three quarters and I'm in at the end of the game and that didn't help me at all. But once I shift my perspective from, all right, I know I'm ready, going in the game, doing what I need to do and producing, then that helped me get more minutes, that helped me do different things. But it's the same way in life and we could be going through a tough time, we could be going through 
a certain struggle right now. If our perspective is negative and we're looking at it as, you know, I want to quit, I don't want to do this no more. How do we expect to get to our goal? How do we expect to shift our perspective and fully get to where we need to get to? You know, it's all about our perspective and how we think about the situation that we're in when we're struggling. So it taught me a lot about perspective, man, and how we have to shift our mindsets, man. And shifting my mindset was probably the greatest thing I've done because if I was to quit, if I was to walk off that team because I wasn't playing, how, how could I live with that, man? How could I go on here and tell you not to quit, but I quit myself, you know what I mean? So that's kind of how I thought about it. And, and even with your perspective, I just kind of learned to control what I can control. I can't control if my coach puts me in the game or not. But the one thing I can control is my attitude. The one thing I can control is what I do when I go in the game and get the opportunity. So it taught me to control what I can control. And even in life, right, there's certain things that we can't control. I can't control how many views this video gets. I can't control how YouTube pushes my video out. But for me, the thing I can control is the quality of my video. I can control my audio. I can control my color. I can control different things like that. So it taught me to control what I can control. When I be in practice, when I be in the game, I only focus on things that I can control. I didn't focus on the outside things. I didn't focus if my coach didn't look my way or not. When he looks my way, I'm gonna be ready. I'm gonna be prepared. I'm gonna go in and do what I gotta do. When it's my turn, I gotta go in and produce and control what I can control. I can't control what this person's doing. I can't control what that person's doing. I can't control what this person thinks. I can only control what I'm capable of and what I can do. Third was my confidence. It taught me to always be confident no matter what situation you're in. Just because somebody doesn't see you in the good light, just because somebody's sleeping on you, doesn't mean that you should sleep on yourself. And it taught me to never sleep on yourself. Never sleep on yourself. You know, during the time I was on the bench, I knew that I was good enough to play. Just like I said in the previous slide, once I shifted my mindset, I gained that confidence in myself. And when I had that confidence, I knew. And confidence is something that nobody should be able to take away from you. Nobody should be able to rip your confidence from you. I don't care if Coach K from Duke say, yo, you're not good enough. I'm still gonna be confident in myself to, to tell him in his face, yo, I'm good enough. You know what I mean? So we have to have unwavering confidence no matter what. I don't care if you at the end of the bench, not playing. Once you get in that game, I want you to be the most confident person there is. In life, confidence is key. If you are not confident in yourself, you're not gonna do a bunch of things that can get you to the next level. If I didn't build that confidence, would I be grinding on YouTube to get to where I am now? Would I be posting videos? Would I be talking to a camera talking about how I was on the bench? It takes confidence for me to do this. Building your confidence is one of the key things that helped me. Um, always staying confident in myself, always believing in myself no matter what anybody says. No, even no matter what happens, I go in the game, I'll airball. Next shot, you just gotta be confident. The way to build your confidence is through the work. If you're putting in the work consistently, you're in the gym, getting a thousand shots a day. Yo, I worked on that move mad times. I already know this This is my go-to move. I know it works 99% of the time. That's how you build that confidence. So when you win the game, you're doing that move that you worked on. You're taking that shot that you worked on a thousand times. That's how you build that confidence. And with me even being on the bench, I was super confident. When I would go in the game, I knew my move was a Hezzy pull-up. That's the move I'm doing. Hezzy pull-up, it worked helped me build my confidence. So now I know it's like, yo, I got the Hezzy pull up in the bag. All right, what else could I do? Let me do a tween tween pull up. Let me off the dribble. Let me, you know what I mean? That's how it works. The confidence is what's gonna build you to the next level. But you cannot let other people, you cannot let coaches, you cannot let players, friends, fans, you can't let those people dictate your confidence because if you let outside sources dictate your confidence, you're gonna fold, man. You're gonna fold, so. I was unconfident at first, like, dang, I'm on the bench, I'm not good enough. But once I put the work in and knew and did stuff in the game that showed me, like, yo, be confident in yourself, trust yourself, that's when it helped my confidence. And now in life, I'm confident to do a bunch of different things. I can go into the store and sell myself, hey, this is what I do, this is the services I provide, I can do that. I can post YouTube videos talking about story times and things like that and how to get better. You know, I'm confident in myself, I'm confident to put myself out there, to talk to people do different things so taught me how to be more confident in myself and to never let outside sources dictate your confidence the fourth thing i learned was your environment if you had a tree would you plant it in a concrete slab no because it wouldn't grow because the area around it it's the same thing sometimes the area that we're in doesn't allow us to grow sometimes the people that we're around don't allow us to grow and they push us back 
And I would say that was kind of the case with me. A lot of, we gotta put ourselves in good environments that allow us to grow. We gotta go places where people appreciate us and not what we're just put up with. And I knew that I can go in and produce, but maybe it's just not for this team. Maybe I should go to another team who needs somebody like me. And that's one of the things I learned. Sometimes your environment can stop you from getting to the next level. Sometimes you need to leave that place. Sometimes you need to leave your city, leave your state, and go somewhere else where people will appreciate your talents, where people will love what you do and see what you bring to the table. And not only just put you on, but help you get better. Hey man, yo, you, you're, you're athletic. Here's what you could do to do this. Hey, let me help you with your shots so you can do this. You can help us out. Sometimes it really just be your environment, man. And maybe you're on a team that's fully stacked, right? If you are, I know how in AAU, they be building these super teams, right? Maybe it's not up to you to go to that team because they already got well-known players. Maybe you should go to a team where they don't have many well-known players and play on that and dominate yourself so you can gain that confidence, so you can gain that skill set, you can gain that experience, right? It's all about your environment, man. And if you're around people who are not pushing you to grow, if you're in a toxic environment, it's hard for you to really get to your goals. So you gotta switch that environment up and maybe go to another school. Maybe try something out, maybe go somewhere different. Environment is one of the things that being on the bench helped me learn that prepared me for life. And the fifth and last thing I learned is to be undeniable. And what I mean by being undeniable is when I was on the bench, I, I grew in the mindset of saying to myself, I cannot give my coach one thing to not put me in the game. I don't care if I'm able to shoot well. I don't care if I'm the best shooter on the team, the best ball handler, the best rebounder. But if I don't check the box to bring in energy, then I cannot play. And once I developed that mindset, it helped me become a more well-rounded player. I started to focus on everything. I started to focus on being the best player, best possible player I could be in every box. I started working on my shooting more. I started working on my ball handling more. I started becoming a defender, picking up full court. I started rebounding more. I started doing a bunch of different things so I could become undeniable. So when, this, when the situation in the game comes, yo, we need, yo, we need somebody to knock down a shot. You gotta be thinking about me because I put that work in. I'm undeniable, you cannot deny me. Any situation that comes, you cannot deny me because I became undeniable. And that helped me prepare me for life because in certain situations, especially in business, I gotta be so good that you can't deny me. My videos gotta look so crispy that you can't deny it. You gotta be undeniable to a point where nobody can deny you, nobody can leave you on the bench, to a point where the fans is coming in like, yo, why isn't he playing? People gotta know, that's what it helped me prepare me for life, like being undeniable, being so good that nobody could say no to you. I'ma drop a little bonus one for y'all. So for y'all boys who are on the bench, here is what you need to do. You need to continue to work. Matter of fact, you need to work 10 times harder. Because sometimes the reason why you're on the bench is truly because you don't have the skill set needed to play. And my freshman year, I didn't have the skill set needed to play. So what I do, the summer I came back, I worked on everything. You may need to become stronger. You, need, you may need to become a better ball handler. You may need to work on yourself mentally and gain more confidence. Whatever it is you need to do, you need to work 10 times harder because the work that you're putting in is not enough, which is why you are on the bench. You gotta be real with yourself. So continue to work harder, continue to find the areas of what you need to improve in. Like I said, become undeniable, become well-rounded. Work on that confidence. Whatever it is that you need to do, do it, my G. Also, be who your team needs to be. If you're on a team full of slashers, bro, work on your shooting, bro. Work on your shooting in the summer. You know, be different from everybody on your team. Be that different piece that separates your team. So if you're working on it in the summer, work on that shooting, work on defending, work on bringing energy, work on whatever it is. Be what your team needs. Another thing I would say is just to be patient. You gotta realize that this is a long journey. You just gotta be patient throughout the whole thing. For me, I was super patient. I waited for my time, I waited on God's time. I knew that God had a bigger plan for me, so I waited. I waited, I waited, I waited, I wanted to quit. I did not quit because I knew that there was something else in store. I knew that it may not be me playing, but I still gotta continue to take the things, take the experience and learn from it. So continue to be patient throughout this whole journey. Things aren't just gonna come like that overnight. You gotta wait and be patient, man. No need to rush, be patient. We got time. We good, just be patient and continue to learn. And the last thing I would say to you is continue just to learn. Uh, just being on the bench, watching, seeing how other teams are running their sets, seeing how your team is messing up and how you can add to that. Just continue to learn, be a sponge, soak it in, listen to your coach, listen to what your coach needs, master the plays, 
master the press, master the defense, different things like that. Go home, find ways how you can score on the offense. If a player you're coming off the right wing, learn, work on that. When you're in the gym, work on how you can attack off that right wing and just continue to learn the game. You know, watch film online. There's a bunch of different ways that you can learn, but if you just continue to learn, that's how you continue to get better and separate yourself from other players. Hopefully this video was able to help you guys. I know there's a lot of hoopers who are on the bench who want to play and things like that, but these are some of the things that you need to take into account that could help you learn not only on the court, but for life, which what really matters. And a lot of this stuff is what I learned, which helps me. The way I'm able to go through adversity and things like that was because I was on the bench and I was learning. I was going through that and I have experience in doing it. So I just apply it to my life. So hopefully this video was able to help you guys. Um, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. I'm gonna be dropping more videos like this. It's your boy Reek. We gone.